it called the math lady today we're working on applications using division well you have learned whether or not you realize it three different ways to handle division problems take a look like we have a simple division problem here 11 divided by 4 right so let's just do it and see the three different ways that we have learned to write division answers. We know 4 goes into 11 twice, and 3 is left over. So the very first way you learned how to write it is with the remainder. And that would have been 2, remainder 3. Okay? Now, another way you learn to write it, as well as a, I should say, I was going to say a fraction, but let's just say mixed number. A mixed number, and that would be 2 and 3 fourths. And the third way you learned to write it was as a decimal. And as a decimal, we actually are not done with this division problem. We actually need to add a decimal right there, add a 0, and keep going. So 7 goes up. 7, <laughs> I can speak. <laughs> 7 times 4 is 28. Okay, we've got 2 left over. We add another 0, and we have a 5, and then we're done. So this answer would be 2.75. Okay, three different ways to write it. But when you have word problems, how do you know which one of these ways to write your answer is the appropriate one? Ah, it depends on the word problem. So I'm going to give you a few word problems. Let's see how we can determine which is the best way to write our answer. Let's take a look at this problem. In our PE class of 49 kids, we need to form four teams. How many kids will be on each team? Well, let's do our division problem. So we've got 49 kids, and we're going to divide them into four teams. Okay, if we divide, we'll figure out how many students are on each team. Four goes into one, and then four goes into nine two times, but we've got one left over. So this is this one represents an actual kid, right? We just can't toss that away. We can't call it a remainder. You know, we can't call it a fraction. Well, we actually can call it a remainder, just not a fraction or a decimal. Watch. So teams number one, team number two, and team number three are all going to have 12 students. But this one remaining student is going to go on to the fourth team. And that means, oops, I know how to write. It's going to have 13 kids on that team. So that is how we actually write this answer. We do use the remainder concept, but we take that remainder and that child, we put them on the other team. Take a look at this example. Ice cream sundaes cost $3. If I have $20, how many ice cream sundaes can I buy? Oh, let's set up the division problem. So we're going to do 20 divided by 3. And we know that goes in 6 times, and there's 2 left over. Now, think about it. When you order an ice cream sundae, can you tell the guy, can you give me um, 2 thirds of a sundae? You can't do that. You need to order a whole sundae. So here, we're only looking for the whole number answer. It means that I can order six Sundays. So in this situation, we wouldn't actually worry about the remainder or the fraction or the decimal. We're looking to find the whole number answer. Let's try this last example. The four girls who ran the lemonade stand made $52.12. They divided the money equally. So how much did each girl make? Let's set up the division problem. So we're going to do four into $52.12. Okay, four goes into five one time. Four goes into 12 three times. Four goes into one zero times. And then four goes into 12 three times. So here it does divide equally, and we have an answer of $13.03. So here is an instance where we actually keep it in the decimal form because we're dealing with money and we uh, actually keep the decimal part because we're not going to throw out the three cents everybody's going to make thirteen dollars and three cents okay so really the point of this lesson was to show you that when we have division problems you really have to think about what they're ans asking to figure out how to answer are they looking for a whole number are they looking for us to put it in a fraction form or a decimal form it all depends on what they're asking in the problem. All right, so to try some practice problems, make sure you hit me up on the website. Try the practice set to make sure you can do this for yourself. That's it today. It's Nicole the Math Lady. I'll see you next time. Bye.